Is it on now? There we go. But I got you awake anyways. For all of you at 10 o'clock, you better be awake. But welcome. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome, one and all, to Easter Sunday at beautiful Savior Lutheran Church, where we remember and invite all in Christ to live in grace, generosity, reaching out, advocacy, compassion, and encouragement. Welcome, one and all, in this space and through cyberspace, we gather in the name of the one who calls us, us together across time and space, and no matter what, because he even conquered death. So welcome to Easter Sunday. Uh, the bulletin has everything you need in it, so you can follow along. Otherwise, we've got you know the stuff will be up on the screens. Now, for there's a couple of things because yes, I mean no fooling. Tomorrow's April. Um, we have you know a couple things coming up. First off, just in general, up here in the front corner, you already see them. The children's corner. If you have children or childish ones. And I'm watching a lot of wives look at their husbands for some reason. Here's a space for you. Um, and there will be a children's message later, but otherwise activities and things to keep hands and minds busy. Uh, during, you know, this coming week, uh, an invitation, Pint with a Pastor, happens first and third Tuesdays of the month at Catalina Brewery. It is a space for conversation and discussion. And yes, if you want to have a pint, they have some good beers. If you want to have some food, they have some really good food. If you don't want to drink anything alcoholic, they don't have everything alcoholic. So uh, it's an opportunity to gather. That is the first and third Tuesdays at Catalina Brewery on seven, at 7 p.m. Uh, and one of the things we do through our community connections and trying to do with love and action on Wednesday is bags for foster kids. These are creating heavy duty like backpacks for children who live in the foster care system to have their own heavy-duty bag to hold their possessions because the reality is often they get moved around. And so it is theirs, you know, so they can keep uh, control of their stuff. There's a sign-up out just on the other side of that window in the, in the gathering area. Uh, otherwise, show up Wednesday 1 to 3 in Werner Hall. And then, as always, there's all kinds of stuff. Check out the website, beautifulsavior.net. Uh, you know, get on the mailing list. There's the Easter meal at the lot today, so if you've signed up and brought, to bring food and you haven't brought food yet, <laughs> wait until after service to leave and go get it. Um, midweek worship continues at 6.15 on Wednesday. It's a blend of Tize and Celtic worship with communion, and that's every Wednesday at 6.15. We're doing a manna bag packing event next Sunday between services. Again, there's stuff online for that. Women's Bible study coming up, Prime Timers Luncheon, lots of other stuff, ways in which you can connect and refresh, and just be. And yes, there seems to be all kinds of stuff that's going on with life. It's amazing to think that tomorrow is April already, and things are moving fast. And in the midst of everything with Holy Week and just Easter, how many people are buzzed on, can on candy right now? How many kids are? How many parents are buzzed on caffeine so they're pre-setting pre the kids? In the meantime, just stop for a second. Take a breath. Find yourself in this space. Maybe hear the waters of the fonts flow, reminding you of those promises that God has made to you and that they continue to wash over you and shape you, move you and uphold you, immersing you in the love of God He is risen! Alleluia! He is risen indeed! Alleluia! The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The world belongs to God. The earth and all its people. How good it is! How wonderful! We live together in unity. Love and faith come together. If Christ's disciples keep silent, these stones would shout aloud. Open our lips, O God, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. With the whole church, 
We affirm that we are made in God's image, befriended by Christ, empowered by the Spirit. With people everywhere, we affirm God's goodness at the heart of humanity, planted more deeply than all that is wrong. With all creation, we celebrate the miracle and wonder of life, the unfolding purposes of God, forever at work in ourselves and the world. With you. Let us pray. God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people toward the fullness of eternal life with you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated and I invite the children forward for the children's message. <laughs> I like that giggle. Come and see ya. Yes, and parents, moms, dads, grandparents can come and bring theirs too. They're a little shy. I've, I've had all my shots. <laughs> I don't bite much, unless they look yummy. Arr. Hey, Max. Oh, you're training him early, I noticed, on the helicopter. There you go. Come on, come on up. I know. Oh, you wing dog. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. Now, do you, do you get presents? Like birthdays and Christmas, do you get presents? You do? 
All right. Do you get, so you get boxes? Sometimes you might get a box at home that kind of looks like this. You know? No? Your boxes are bigger? Yours is big. Well, well this, this box is big enough for my cats. No matter how big they are, they will fit. Yes. So, but when you get a box, like on your birthday, right? What do you do? You take off the wrapping paper and you open it. All right. Ta-da! What? Aww. Oh, hey, thank you. Yeah, we need, now, now there was something. Else. It's empty. That's, wait a minute. Would, would you want an empty box for your birthday or for Christmas? That would be kind of miserable, wouldn't it? Unless you get a really big box, right? How many of you remember getting like a refrigerator? And you, had, you, made, your bo- you made your box for it? Yep, yeah, I wish this box was bigger. I'd make a box for it out of it. Oh, well. But, it isn't. but it's empty. But here's the, here's the goofy thing. This is what we celebrate on Easter, an empty box. We celebrate on Easter an empty box. We put Jesus in a box. We call it a tomb. We call it a grave. We put him in there. He's dead. We put him in the box. A couple days later, we open the box and there's nobody home. Like, well, that's just crazy. But here's the thing. The real gift Jesus gives us is not an empty box. Because, you know, boxes open farther. And you can do things with them. And you can see things. And if you look out, you might see some of the presents that God gave you and Jesus out there out in the world. If you look out through the I see Sarah, and Preston, and Lori, and Carmen, and Eric. How many of you remember that TV show? (laughs) Not to date yourself a little too much. But you can see, you can see through it. And that's the thing. We see through this box now with the love of Jesus. Just as God looks through this empty box with the love of Jesus to us. And that's a gift we can take and use all the time. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the gift of an empty box, but a new way to see you and me in love. In Jesus' name we pray and we say, Amen. Well, thank you all for coming up and playing with my empty box. And you guys can return back to your families to the table. The fun stuff that's over there. If you color up something nice, I want to put stuff on my walls, please. And as they turn to, they return to their lessons, we turn to ours. I'm so sorry I was enjoying the children's message so much. (laughs) Our first reading today is from Isaiah, the 25th chapter. More than 700 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah proclaims the good news of God's salvation and calls all people to rejoice. God will make a rich feast for all people. God will wipe the tears from their eyes. And most importantly, God will destroy death itself. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. 
He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Join me in reciting Psalm 118 responsively. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this is enough. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading today is from 1 Corinthians. The core of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the, death, is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared to the earliest of his followers, so we experience the presence of the risen one in the preaching of his faith. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Our gospel for this Easter Sunday is the last, very last bit of the gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. 
They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. You know, this morning, you know, the weather's a little fun. I'm trying to look outside. I don't think it's raining right now. The last couple of days has been really wild trying to pay attention to the weather because at six in the morning, we had a, a sunrise service in the garden. And, you know, it's like at different times of the week, we're like, can we even have it? Is it going to be raining or is it going to be too windy? Or what's going to all happen out there? I was a little worried about the fact that even if it was windy, it'd be out there like Marilyn Monroe, you know, kind of thing. Um, I actually had... I had colleagues, though, in parts of the Midwest where I came from, that they got like eight inches of snow for Good Friday. They're like, there you go, that's fun, you know. And, you know, just the weather being crazy and being up north, I mean, I'm grateful they were down here because, needless to say, I never did an outdoor sunrise service for Easter in northern Wisconsin. Not going to happen. They can get up to go deer hunting, but they never would have come out for the, you know, I I know how this works, you know. Some idols are golden, some are just green and gold in Packer land. But, uh, you know, I realized that one of the easiest to go, you know, kind of predictions that the, you know, that they love to make up there is that things were going to be icy. Really? And I finally figured out why. It's so easy to spell. I see why. (laughs) You got it. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Yes. Um, Now, one of the you know one of the things you know to realize is many of you are going to be looking at me going, "Uh, Pastor. Um, we have things to get to. There's these things called brunch reservations. So hop to it. <laughs> K.O. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, that would be Ed McMahon, wouldn't it? All right. But yes, we have things to hop to. We got things to get to. Because all of a sudden, something crazy is going on. Hi, welcome to Easter, a celebration. This is good news, and the news we get is these women running out of the tomb in fear and saying nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Wait, what? Why would that be the case? That just seems odd. I mean, let's face it. These women were afraid but they were brave enough to go in the dark to a tomb to do the things that a woman had to do in the first century Mediterranean world because no guy was going to touch the body because it would make them ritually unclean. And sorry, ladies, you were by definition almost ritually unclean the way they thought. So they had no problem going in the dark to go and deal with a body that nothing had been done with since it got laid there three days before. And they weren't afraid of that. They even went knowing that they might have a problem stopping them from their ultimate goal of actually doing anything because there's this huge rock blocking the entrance. And how were they ever going to do that? But, surprisingly enough, the rock was moved. 
And upon entry, they saw a young man in a white robe, kind of like me, years ago. (laughs) Reminding them of what Jesus told them before. He wasn't going to be there. Look, he's not here. Look, that's where they laid him. But he goes ahead of you to Galilee. So tell the disciples and Peter. And terror seizes them and they flee. They flee at that point in time. Not before. Now, why? It makes no sense. What's so fearful of this? This is long before, you know, Walking Dead and all that kind of stuff, folks. So it's not like they're all of a sudden going, oh great, there's a zombie savior out there looking for us. Or anything like that. What's so fearful? How about this? Everything's changed. A dead body is put in a tomb. You go to the tomb, you find the dead body. That's the way it always works. Dead people stay dead. That's the rule. Right? Once you're dead, you're dead. Now? What do you do with that? What do you do with that new information? What do you do with that massive change to reality? Might that make you afraid? I bet you it does, even though a bunch of you are going, eh, nah, 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 nah. Really doesn't. Yeah. How many of you like to change? How many of you are pleasant people if your morning routine gets messed with? Yeah, that tells you how much you like change. We all want the world to change, but we don't want to. And we wonder why it keeps repeating. We don't want to change. We prefer the comfort of the status quo. We prefer what is usual, even if it's not even good for you. How many bad relationships do people stay in because they don't think they can do better, they don't think they deserve better, or they think that's usual in what they are supposed to have? How many people stay in bad job situations because they don't want to have to change jobs? How many times will we continue a bad habit, even knowing how bad it is supposedly for us, and people are constantly reminding us it's a bad habit, but we do it anyways because it's normal. It's usual. It's the way things have always been done. And dead people stay dead. Wait a minute. Something radically has changed. Yes. What does that mean? (gasps) Now, let's face it. The women had to go tell someone sometime. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here. All right? And I almost wonder if the men had some similar fright. When the women finally got over and adjusted, that Mary Magdalene went to Peter and said, Hey, Peter, I got good news and bad news for you. Well, I've had a lot of bad news lately. Lead with the good. Good news tomb is empty, Jesus is alive. <gasps> Wait a minute, what's the bad news? He wants to talk to you about last Thursday night. (laughs) Is that maybe part of it too? Is that maybe part of the fear? We've got God on the loose. We had him nailed to a cross. That seemed to hold him. We made a mistake of putting him in a tomb. That didn't hold him. 
Everyone, look busy. He don't know where he is. Is that part of the issue too? Because everything changes. Or it should. But most of us, again, like to hold on for various reasons to that which was. Many of us have glorious reminiscences reminiscences it's too early in the morning for this of the good old days regardless of whether or not they really were it's actually been shown that we have a phenomenal capacity subconsciously and consciously to remember that which we want to And forget that which we don't. And for some strange reason, we don't want to remember the bad things. It's called self-preservation. But we have these good old days. And we often, so we want to really claim that. Or we're afraid of what might happen tomorrow because everything seems to be changing. Isn't it interesting? We have a phrase, good old days, but we don't speak of, with hope, good future days. Even though part of the good news that the women were supposed to tell the disciples was that Jesus goes ahead of you. Catch up. But we get lost in... But I remember when... Or we, with fear, look to the future and go, oh, but things are changing so much. And here we are on this day when change happens. And like the women, we might have to, as we face these situations, might have to take a second and go, let's face it, folks, change is inevitable. The only choice we have is how we deal with change, how we transition. And maybe that's what the women needed. They needed time. Sometimes you might have been given some news and someone tells you, you might want to sit down for this. Or someone tells you something and you almost involuntarily sit down. Or you have to take a step back, literally, physically, or you, whatever. Sometimes you need to get away and let things work. Some say that's what Jesus did for three days. I My junior assistant is going for the cute, so you can all go, aw, now. Aw. Good, you're all following cues. That's a good start. Even though there wasn't in bold print. But the part of the, the good news that we have when the women went back and told the disciples and Peter that Jesus was alive, is a reminder of the fact that all those things that we face, all those transitions, all those changes, all the things that may come, we don't do it alone. We have this phrase, God won't give you more than you can handle. Oh, it gives me a headache every time I even think of that phrase. Because on this day especially, what we celebrate is the fact that our Lord rose again from the dead and he doesn't give us things we can't handle. He doesn't put us to the test. We can handle what we have because he's with us. He's alive. We don't have to worry about what was. All of the horrible things and the terrible things and the evil things that were done, all the sin and everything else like that, that he took upon himself. Notice that the tomb didn't even have anything like that. That all went away. But the promise is that he goes ahead of us and leads the way to Galilee. But more importantly, he's alive right now. Right now. So it doesn't worry about what might have been or what you're looking towards and going, oh, what might be. We can concentrate on the fact of a risen Savior who is with us right now so we can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Because there is nothing and no place 
and know where he isn't. And he can come with us. Come here, Luca. Urgh, come here. I get my cute prop, so I look better. <laughs> and so we can look to the future with hope, right? We can look forward in anticipation, knowing that today we have a risen Lord and Savior who changed everything for you, for me, for the world, even for them. And we can rejoice in that because he's alive. Everything has changed so that we can because he's with us so we can. He will carry us through all that was to all that will be because he's with us today. He is risen indeed. Good. You're catching on. <laughs> he is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And so, as we remember this gift that comes to us always, this gift of life and new life, remember that God loves you, and so do I. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Luca. I needed a good cute prop. confess the faith of the church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we come to the prayers of the church, we lift up the joys and concerns that are shared with us. Are there any more prayer cards out there to bring forward? And so as we prepare our hearts for prayer, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. For all those needing health and healing, especially Paul, Chuck, Lisa, Aaron, Brenda, Kit, Jim, Judy, Claire, Rose, Levon, Phyllis, Roy, Mary, Becky, Jerry, Rick, Lee. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. dealing with cancers or chronic conditions and illnesses, especially Carrie, Nancy, Erica, Jock, Cindy, Kevin, Debbie, Bill, Mary, Pam, Janine, Preston, Ryan, Shirley, Heidi, Rachel, Javier, Jim, Robin, Dick, Izzy. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Add in prayers for Eddie for quick recovery. For all those nearing the end of their lives and those on hospice, especially Al, Chuck, Claire, Bruce. For all those who mourn, especially the family and friends of Dave Seymour, Ursula Seabach, Brenda Laconis, Wanda Riggle. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Jan, who needs an advocate, and we pray for peace and comfort for Carrie and Stephanie. And we pray for all those whose cares brought them to us through the cup of cold water. Nick, Brittany, Michelle, Faith, Jay, Julie, Dio, Mike, Doug, Debbie, Tim, Juan, and Victor. Oh Lord, hear our prayer.
for all that is on our hearts right now. For all of the hopes and the fears. For the joys and the tears. For the things that we need to leave behind in that tomb. And for the things we need your strength, dear Lord, so that we may rise again. We pray for those dealing with natural and man-made disasters around the world. And we pray your new life come through reconciliation and through recovery. We pray for an end to violence and oppression, for peace and justice, for care and love, as your Son proclaimed. We pray for life and new life. And so we ask your blessings on the new life and the celebration for the birth of Cameron Wayne Peterson. But for all other celebrations, we remember life and love, for that is what this day is about. And so we celebrate the birthdays of Lynn Bow, Laura Steichen, Abigail MacArthur, and the anniversaries of Connie and Steve Scherbanek and Mary and Don Schumacher. And all those other reminders of life and love, all those other ways in which we see your risen presence around us, may we see it, may we celebrate it, and may we share it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please find some token of Christ's peace and love to share with one another now and always.
Let us pray. Risen One, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. Form us to be your witnesses in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with all the witnesses of the resurrection, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promised Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophets, and at the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, 
we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in, this, in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with the, those of your servants of every time in every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, dear Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. The risen Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. Come and eat at God's table. I invite the congregation to be seated. The communion assistants come forward at this time. As we you know, do this, one, one minor thing I'd like to share. Uh, right before the passing of the peace, right at the beginning of the passing of the peace at the 8 o'clock service, an extra prayer petition was handed to me. And it simply said this, God, thank you for you are daily bread. And that is what this is about. It, it, he, this is the Lord's Supper. He is the bread of life. All are welcomed. All are invited to come and receive this gift of grace and love. You will be directed to come down the center aisle in two lines, whichever side that you are. Receive the bread. It is all gluten-free, so anyone has any issues? No one has issues. Um, so you come on down, receive it, turn to the outside. The communion assistants will have trays with wine and grape juice. The grape juice is towards the center. There are bowls for the empty cups. If you wish to spend some time in prayer and reflection during or before, after communion, there are two prayer stations in the back of the church for you to be able to use. If you need communion brought to you, please notify an usher and we'll be happy to deliver it. For those of you joining us online, simple plate, simple cup, bread, cracker, wine, grape juice, something simple. Jesus sat at a holiday banquet table and took the basic simple staples off of it as a reminder of God's enduring presence and what God can do with simple things like us. The body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Come, receive these gifts of grace.
May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen us and keep us in his grace. Amen. Amen. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share your abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. I was told this before, and I pass this on to you as a help. Easter is a time for a lot of live animals. Sometimes you have little bunnies, chicks, and stuff like that. If you are feeling a little off, if you are having some difficulty, always go and get a baby duck. It'll help you feel down. <laughs> and he's not by the drum set. <laughs> In our disbelief, we have been given faith. Amen. In our fear, we have been given hope. Amen. In our hate, we have been given love. Amen. In our death, we have been given new life. Amen. The tomb is empty. May in your new life, may you be transformed by the blessings of faith, hope, and love. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us sing praise to Him with endless joy. Yes, we 
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace, rejoice, and be glad.